The next chord would normally be an A, so I might play a D chord with an A bass. That's the same concept that I just used before when I uh, played the bass note uh, in the third chord as an F sharp. So uh, let's have a listen to what I've got so far. I have a D chord, E minor 9, D with an F sharp bass, G, D with an A bass. I'm using the note A, which is in the D chord, as the bass note this time. And then the next chord I'll play, say, a D chord with a B bass. Uh, which would, uh, that would be, the, at that particular point in the scale, there would normally be a B minor chord. And what I'm actually doing by playing a D chord with a B bass, I'm creating a B minor 7 chord. So uh, let's have a listen to what I've got so far. Here's D, E minor 9, D with an F sharp bass, G, D with an A bass, D with a B bass. Okay, I'll just play that one more time without calling out the chords so you can hear the chords clearly. Three, four. Okay, that's a little bit different than the uh, first set of chords I played. Um, at this point, we'd normally hear or expect to hear a C sharp diminished chord. And uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, add a little bit of a surprise, make sort of a heavier sound here, just to get a little bit of impact because I'm almost at the end of our uh, chord progression so far. So I might, I'll just borrow a chord, say, from uh, D minor pentatonic. I'll use a C chord, uh, a C2. So instead of it being a C sharp bass, here's our surprise. Uh, people are expecting to hear a C sharp bass. It's like well, that's where they're expecting it to go, but now we put in this C, and then I'll just resolve that to say a G chord. I'm just going to play a C2 uh, to a G chord. Now, of course, that really didn't create much of a surprise when you heard it then, but when you hear it in context uh, with the other chords that are actually in the key of D, uh, you'll hear it sort of a bit of an interesting sound. So well, here we go. I'll play it all the way through with those two chords at the end. D. E minor 9, D with an F sharp bass, G, D with an A bass, D with a B bass. Now, yeah, that little bit of a surprise. And if I played that whole progression again, so if we're writing a song or we're putting something together, um, and you wanted to play that progression through twice because it's sort of a progression you want to hear over and over. Um, I'd probably play exactly the same chords, but maybe just add, a, maybe just change the last chord. Actually, just change the last chord from just being a G. Uh, maybe change it to a G with a B bass. Again, I'm just keeping the chords pretty basic, but uh, making some of the bass lines go a little bit different than they would normally go. Uh, so the second time through I'd have a C2 going to a G with a B bass. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll play the progression through twice and uh, just make that slight alteration in the last chord, uh, making the last chord a G with a B bass. Everything else I'm going to leave the same. Uh, let's have a listen to how that would sound. Three, four. progression and play it all again or you could go somewhere else uh, into a, like a B minor or something if you wanted to go into a chorus or a bridge or something like that. Um, but uh, hopefully that helps. It just uh, means we can loosen up the traditional chords in a key and just create an element uh, 
of interest just by recolouring things and uh, makes for interesting guitar playing and interesting sounds. So I hope that's helpful.